But why some of our, of, of us that are an African were limited is because we don't relate with other other countries. Most of the people I do business with they are not Nigerians, they are Asians, they are Caucasians, mm. and they are Indians. Mm. A few Nigerians also. You need to be open-minded. So when you when you see yourself as a global individual where you are not limited by traditions, African mentality, I've seen a lot of people they've been abroad, they don't even go to a restaurant to eat. If they don't eat pande gram, they eat amala, they, do, they eat eba and rice. You don't you don't you don't mean go try don't. other things. You also need to be part of the system. You're right. And here you get to connect with people and all that. However, I go connected in the local church, I was going then. Uh, talking to a few people, uh, of course, many people is going to advise you, oh, this is what you should do, go and do security all day, as they do in London. Go and mm -hmm. do this and that. And I said, okay, I'll be looking into that. Then my wife, uh, mother-in-law, was around. I brought a little money from Europe, so I said, let me just take a, a little bit of time if I start looking for a job. Then one my, one day my wife said to me, you know, my mom will soon be going back. It's not good that they will say to you, I'm the only one working. So I said, okay, let me pick up a job. Mm. So I pick up, I went to one of the agency and I got a job with a, uh, a meat company, chicken. Wow. Chicken and all that. Yeah. Immediately I got there. I, I, people look at me. The minute I stepped into the front of the organization, people were just laughing at me. Now what is wrong with this guy? Because I dress, you know, casually, nice runners and all that. They look at me and they shook their head. Where is your jacket? Where is your sweater and all that? Cold. Yeah, it was in second room. Oh my goodness. And of course there were one lady was so, so nice to me. And here we're back again. Thank you guys for joining in. I say thank you to those that have subscribed to my channel. For um, um, new subscribers, you're welcome. And for those that, of you that are just coming for the first time, you're welcome as well. My name is Faith, but this channel is called The Information Chick. And while I teamed it is because I'm known for sharing information to my friends back home in Nigeria. I'm based in Canada, Nova Scotia, and it's been a wonderful journey. And today we are going to be talking about how you can um, success stories and lots more. So you're welcome. We'll be going on a very short break. And when we come back, we'll meet our guests. Stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. And this is me, Faith. If you're just joining in, welcome. To all subscribers, you guys are the real deal. So today we have a guest and we'll just get right to it. So our guest today is Pastor James Olusa C. And he is a... Um, licensed social, social worker by profession, a businessman, an entrepreneur, and a pastor by vocation. But I'll just let him introduce himself. He's right here. Yeah, let's give it up for Uncle Jay. <laughs> I call uh, him Uncle <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sister Faith. Um, I'm glad to be on your channel um, and also to give a little bit of information that I strongly believe is going to be very helpful to many that will be interested. However, just the same way you've introduced me, my name is James Oluye Um, I've been in this country now 13 years. Um, however, um, I've done a lot of things, a couple of things, but uh, today, by the grace of God, I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I'm a licensed social worker. Uh, I'm also a dealer, car dealer. Uh, I to be like you someday. <laughs> by vocation, I pastor an arm of the Dean Christian Church of God, House of Miracles. Okay. okay. Thank you so much for coming. We really want to appreciate it because I know you're very busy getting you. But the good thing is that even in your busy schedule, you still find time to pick your calls. That's amazing. Not a lot of people have that skills. So I really want to thank you. And um, I promise not to take it for granted. <laughs> okay, so um, why did you relocate to Canada 20 oh, years ago, right? Uh, almost 20, not 20 years ago. I'm okay. Little, um, a brief insight to that. Ah, uh, well, um, I grew up. I was born in Nigeria, uh, like every other Nigerians. Um, I remember very well when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. It has always been a thing of challenge to me because when you don't challenge a system, you don't get an, an answer. 
And mm. in the midst of the challenging a system, because something is inside of you, challenging the system, mm. many times revelations inside will be coming to you to know where the country or uh, your environment is heading to. I remember when I was young, uh, my dad then would take us to Leventies, would take us to amusement park. We were very young. Then I remember as a young boy, they would be telling me, oh, Nigeria is going to get better. Nigeria mm -hmm. is going to get better. Never, I never knew that even at that time, we were really, really, really enjoying in the mm -hmm. 80s. And of course, right now. Yeah. So when I when, when I was in college, the Yaba College of Technology, the first institution in Nigeria, mm. taught in Africa, 27 in the old world. So it's the best institution to be. Anyway. <laughs> okay, I can see someone okay. playing trumpets. <laughs> it's allowed. <laughs> so when 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 I was in Yaba Tech, uh, after my national diploma doing my HND, my brother would send vehicle from uh, Germany in those days. So I was the one selling those cars. So I was into business. And of course, during my IT then, I, I, I did my IT in a printing company where I learned about printing. So I became a printer in the school. Unilag, you have a college of technology, Lagos State University, Lagos Poly, uh, all the schools in, in Lagos. I became their printer. Mm -hmm. Student Union, I print all their documents, the file jacket they normally give in those days. People are contesting for mm -hmm. presidency, student union. So I got so busy. I couldn't really focus so much on my study. I, I was studying accounting in those mm -hmm. days. However, immediately I finished school, I just became a businessman, a businessman that I have to hire two of my colleagues who were working with me mm -hmm. at that time. So in front of my office in Akoka, I have um I also have cars displayed from Germany that I was also selling. So I didn't I never worked for anybody. Mm -hmm. And when things were going on, I was doing pretty well at that time. Um, and it don't know me. It's about time to settle. And I remember the vow I made to myself while I was in secondary school that I'm not going to have my children in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And why that question? I remember when I was in school then, one of our friends, any small strike, any small riot, he would travel to UK. <laughs> and I one day, what is going on? Child? How do you do it? He said, well, mm -hmm. I don't need visa. I was born in the United Kingdom. So anytime I want to go, I just take my passport and go. Mm. Say, wow. Then I went to visit my parents one day. I look at my dad. I look at my mom. <laughs> Why did you bath me in Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, of course, um, they couldn't afford it at that time. So I made up my mind right there while I was in school that I am not going to mm. have my, my children mm. uh, in Nigeria. And mm. that prompted me to travel abroad, 2002, to Germany. Uh, to meet wow. my uh, the intention was to buy printing equipment and make some money and come back and invested my business a big time uh, in Nigeria. But however, when I got to Germany and I saw safety, I saw security, cleanliness mm. and everything all over the place, the system is working. And mm. I said to my brother, you know what, I'm not going back. <laughs> <laughs> you stayed back in Germany. <laughs> and I decided to sell all my stuff, uh, my house that I, uh, I have to lease it to my one of my cousins at the time. Sell all my car, sell all the things I have that I'm not going to patch, I'm going to stay. So I just stayed in Germany. Of course, Germany wasn't too friendly, you know. Um, so I told my brother that I'm going to relocate to Netherlands, where my friend was at, at the time. Uh, I was in Netherlands then because police doesn't trouble you even when you don't have visa. But in, in Germany, Netherlands, yeah, in Netherlands, okay, I've been something. there once. <clears throat> once you don't commit a crime, so uh, while I was in Germany, uh, anytime I'm going out with my brother, the police will stop you and oh, we know your visa remains two months. <laughs> Before the expiration of that two months, I'm going to run. So I took off. And I left to Netherlands. So I was in Netherlands, and of course, I got a job. I was working, staying with my friend. And after two months, I rented my own apartment. Netherlands mm. was very good. I was making That's good. Mm. But the language was a barrier for me. I, I have the mind of entrepreneurship. Mm. I went to the school. Um, the language, no matter how you speak it, mm. your language is not enough. Of course, there are assets and all mm. that. And it's such a word that you're not familiar with. So I said to myself, at the age of 30, how am I going to be learning language? I'm supposed to be making money. I'm planning mm. to set down. So mm. I come to learning language. I just said to myself, I'm going to go to 
either UK or Ireland or Blade. So Canada was not in the picture. I want to know how Canada was, came into the picture. I'm going to quickly brief you that. <laughs> um, you see, um, I was talking to a young guy yesterday that came for counseling in the house. Uh, married counseling. Mm. And I was saying to, <clears throat> to this individual that, you know, in life, destiny is key. Mm. And not fail not to fulfill your destiny. You know why? Many people are anchoring on your destiny. You are the next mm. level to some people's level. Mm. And you fail. Many people will also fail. True. So, so it's, it's very, very important that you, you be where you are meant to be. Then you can also lift people to where they are also to be. So anyways, marriage is something that is very key to me. However, uh, my faith, I pray, not like Sister Faith now, my faith now. <laughs> yes, thank God. <laughs> so um, I, I don't take it for granted. I pray, and of course, while you pray, you watch. But, mm -hmm. but one thing about life is always have this, the mind of service. Never skim your way up. Serve mm. your up. Mm. It's never a good thing to skim your way up. That like they do in some other country where people is uh, you skim your way up uh, somehow, but you serve your way up. So in, mm, in, serve your way up. in those days and abroad, we are very few that play musical instrument. So they would, I don't have resident permit, they would smuggle me from Netherlands to go and play when they're having a big program in Germany. Then I play this. Wow. So one of the pastors would be driving in front to make sure the border, the coast is safe. And they would just boom, they would they would drive me in the second car into Germany. And one of these particular occasions, I went to play for a church. Um, mm -hmm. the pastor was again near a very big church in Dusseldorf. Uh after the after we finished the praise and worship and the special number, the pastor that was coming to minister was an invited guest from somewhere, can't remember now. And the man as he mounted the altar to start preaching, he just beckoned on me that young man, stand up. I stood up. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, you're not going to stay in this country. And I said to myself, I knew that already. <laughs> so, I mean, are you kidding? And he said to me again, he said, you're going to a country in Europe, but you're going to be there for a while. God is going to use in the area of music, but you're not going to stay there for long. I said, eh? At that stage, I was so scared because my intention was to settle in UK or Dublin. And uh, of course, uh, the man started speaking in tongues again. Started speaking in tongues. And he said, yeah. I see you ending up in North America. Mm. When he said that, I just said, no, this might enjoy my music. Come on now. <laughs> I, because I never believed it. And that's the honest truth. Mm. It's, I continue, continue, said there, where you are in Europe, the place you are going in Europe, your wife will come and meet you there. Wow. So marry, and you're going to go to North America. Mm. Again, and he said, specifically, mm. Canada. When he said Canada, I have no clue about Canada. I have been hearing about Canada. It was never my choice to be. Yeah. I would rather go to the States than come to Canada, but destiny as it were. Anyways, um, I of course I relocated to, to Dublin. I, I eventually got to Dublin. Wow. I was doing very well, I was making good money. My intention was to settle. Because I got a job with a, a, a medical company where we produce tent for people with cardiac arrest. I was earning a good thing. Uh, somehow, yeah. somehow along the line, when, when God wants to take you to your next level, I lost the job and things started getting staggering and all that. Then I remember the prophecy I received 2002 that I need to come to Canada. Hmm. Along the line, I met my wife divinely connected. I never knew she was a Canadian. Um, oh, she was in Canada already. She's been in Canada since the time I was also in Europe. The sister attended the same church that I used to attend those days in the Apostolic Church. Somehow, somehow along the line, it got connected. She came to, to Ireland, the same way the man of God said it. I never knew she was a Canadian citizen. Uh, she's from uh, Nigeria. She's from Ondo State. And that was Amazing. it. And and that's my short story, how I got to Canada. So it is destiny that actually brought me to Canada. It wasn't a, my own will. Yeah, you said something profound while you were serving. Don't, um, you said, do not skim your way up or serve your way up. Yeah. And while you were doing that, God brought purpose, brought your yeah, wife to you. Absolutely. And then you're here. Wow, that's amazing. Guys, I'm sure you're enjoying the story. Don't worry, after this email, I'll leave his 
email address for those of you that would like to migrate. We're getting to that part. So if you're interested, or you can send me a mail and I'll get you connected to him. Okay, so let's continue. Um, so while you've been in Canada, I'm sure there are so many challenges that um, people are facing. Yes, it's a good country, it's a, it's a good system. What are those challenges and how that you faced and how are you able to navigate them? Okay. Um, you know, in life, you don't just need um, mental intelligence where you go to school and attain ability, technique, and know how. We also need a social intelligence. Mm. Now, I have been social talk intelligence. Today. I'll write that one down. You, did that you can ever you can never succeed in business or in ministry when you don't have social connection. You you'll be so limited. Even now, why some of our, of, of us that are African we are limited is because we don't relate with other other countries. Most of the people I do business with they are not Nigerians; they are Asians, they are Caucasians, mm. and they are Indians. Mm. And of a few Nigerians also. You need to be open minded. So when you when you see yourself as a global individual, where you are not limited by traditions, African mentality, I've seen a lot of people they being abroad, they don't even go to a restaurant to eat. If they don't eat on the game, they eat a mala, they, do, they eat a bar, a rice. You don't you don't you don't mean good. Try don't. other things. You also need to be part of the system. You're right. And here you get to connect with people and all that. However, I go connected in the local church, I was going then. Uh, talking to a few people, uh, of course, many people is going to advise you, oh, this is what you should do, go and do security or the, as they do in London. Go and mm -hmm. do this and that. And I said, okay, I'll be looking into that. Then my wife, uh, mother-in-law, was around. I brought a little money from Europe, so I said, let me just take a, a little bit of time if I start looking for a job. Then one my one day my wife said to me, you know, my mom will soon be going back. It's not good that they will say you I, I'm the only one working. So I said, okay, let me pick up a job. Mm. So I pick up, I went to one of the agency and I got a job with a uh, a meat company, chicken. Wow. Chicken and all that. Yeah. Immediately I got there. I, I people look at me. They immediately I stepped into the front of the organization, people were just laughing at me. Now, what is wrong with this guy? Because I dress, you know, casually, nice runners and all that. They look at me and they shook their head. Where is your jacket? Where is your sweater and all that? Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was a <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. And, of course, there were, one lady was so, so nice to me. And she went into the store, gave me a jacket. By the time I put on the whole sweater, the whole jacket, I was like David with the armor. Hmm. Maybe. And I, of course, I got into the place. The, the, I started sorting the, the arm of the chicken and all that. Then mm. I, immediately we had our first break. I called my wife. I said, I'm coming back home. I can't do this job. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do this job. I remember the job I was doing in Ireland. I said, what? I will not go. He said, please, don't let my mom think I'm the only one working. Mm. I said to myself, this made a, make a lot of sense. Yes, she's so, wise. I'm going to try. I'm just going to endure for a week. <laughs> On Friday, when I was ending the week, as I was looking for the manager, the manager was looking for me. <laughs> looking for the manager to tell him that I'm not coming again. The manager was also looking for me to tell me that I shouldn't come again. I didn't work well. Somehow, somehow along the line, we jammed each other. Oh, sir, I've been looking for you. He said, oh, I've been looking for you too. <laughs> Well, I want to tell you that I'm not coming again. I want to tell you that you shouldn't come again. <laughs> I said, well, then two are scored for. They were good to go. And under it, I left the job on Friday. Then I go to my, to my wife. I said, no, 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 I can't go to you. I'm a firebrand from Lagos. So mm -hmm. I'm going to seek the face of God. I'm telling you through life story. Mm -hmm. And I fasted. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, I'm going to break my fast. I saw a revelation Saturday over Sunday that I was doing car business. The same business I, one of the business I do in Africa, in Nigeria. And uh, the brother I saw that were doing the transaction, some of them were not in talking time again because something transpired between us that even though I, I, I thought I'd forgiven him, it mm. was so difficult for me to relate with this person. It mm. was, I don't want to go into what okay. it has got to do with the woman issue. 
Uh, um, and of course, um, my wife encouraged me that, then why did you fast? God showed you that you were transacting car business with this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, you're talking that you're not going to call him. Come on now. Mm -hmm. So I went to the um to the foyer of the house and I picked my phone. I took so much courage. But honestly, you don't know how it feels. It's like I don't want to, but I just have to. You just have to. But thank God, I threw the call. I put the call through, and it picked the call. The first thing he said to me is like, "Yemi, you are so angry. You are so mad." You're not forgiving me about that. I beg you. I sent this couple of emails. You are not returning my emails and all that. And I said, I'm forgiving you, sir. Mm -hmm. you right? Confidence. That's why you called. <laughs> Already. I said, well, the reason why I called you is that you let you know that I'm doing my car business again. Believe mm -hmm. you, the same way I saw it in the dream. He said, I just did one to so I just made a contact for somebody to look for a vehicle for me in Kotonu, Lagos, uh, Kotonu in Republic of Benin. I said, wow. I said, oh, have you bought it? He said, no. Wow. I said, if the price is good, then I can go with you. Then immediately give me the car, look for the price. I send him my... That was how I started the car business. Wow. The same way I saw it. The lesson I learned from that is that you can never hold any grudge against anybody. It limits your destiny. It limits how far you will go in life. Forgiveness is the key. You just have to if you don't forgive somebody today because they did something wrong, it might mm. not be better. Along the line, the person might grow up and realize, oh, I did something wrong. And, mm. and you are still holding growth over years. Mm. And if you don't have forgiveness, you don't have business in Christian faith, uh, my own belief now. So, mm -hmm. I started the car business. Now, where the social intelligence comes up, in the local church I was at that time, I was a minister, of course, but I relate with everybody. I do yes. in class system. Oh, I'm pastor, I can't talk to someone. Mm -mm, no, no, it doesn't work like that. Because you, the person that will be your destiny helper, your lifter, might not mm. be in the same grade with you, might not be in the same level with you, but mm. the person could accept. Then I met this brother who used to be one of the people that picks people up in the truck, and he said he's a car dealer. Then I laid with him the first time, the second time, he, he studying me also. Then he realized that, oh, this guy is not like every other minister. He's very gentle. He's not proud. Mm -hmm. He's down to that. And that was our started car business. We started the dealership. Uh, and the day was big for the glory of God. And that's how I started the car business. Um, and of course, that was what I was doing. Then I decided to go to school. Okay. Uh, to Seneca College to do my diploma in social work. I went to university, Lakehead University, to do my bachelor's degree. And of course, I went to Humber College to do my postgraduate in behavior, uh, be, uh, applied behavior analysis. Okay. Now, all this is my own self will I really want to be a professional and be doing business. But if I had known better, I don't really need all those schools that I went to. Mm. I went to all those schools, but it's okay, you know. At least I, I was able to mingle with the the people in the system to know mm -hmm. academic, academics and yeah. uh, it was. Because you hear people talk about having this Canadian experience and... Yeah, but sincerely I got to realize that it's not necessary. Anybody that have attained the age of 40 that still want to go to school is good. But you realize that there are lots you can do without even going to school in this part of the land. Um... Canada is a country that you don't need to fear of safety. There's, if you look at the Maslow hierarchy of need, the first thing the uh, hierarchy, Maslow hierarchy of need is telling us is psychological, uh, physiological needs, clothing, you know, and all that. That is not a problem in this part of the world. Uh, you see, the cause of the, the next one is safety, where you are safe from Boko Haram and bandits and kidnappers. All those things mm -hmm. are out there. So, you realize when you get to Canada, you are actually starting your life from the third level, which is your esteem. Mm -hmm. So then I thought by going to university here, it was going to boost my esteem and it's going to raise my serious status and increase my pay. Of course, mm -hmm. was, of course I, I got a better job, but I think at that, I realized the car business that I'm doing on the side makes more money than my salary. I was, mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Then I remember when I came to this country, you know, funny enough, somebody called me two days ago. 
You said somebody gave you your number that, that, that I know. I said, I said, I know it's fake. <laughs> and the first thing the guy did was to check me out on LinkedIn. I never, I remember when I came to this country, I, I put myself in LinkedIn and I put on that LinkedIn education and immigration consultant. Hmm. I've never started that business then. I was studying, but that was what I wanted to do. And I put it on LinkedIn. So I realized it was prophetic. Prophetic, yes. Same business is what I do now, majorly. I bring a lot of international students to Canada. Um, of course, I started working as a autism consultant at the time. Mm. But I was finding fulfillment in doing that job. Because I couldn't relate with people. I couldn't reach out to my I'm just locked up in, on the desk. Um, I realized destiny is more than that. There's more inside of me. Then mm -hmm. I, I was dressing up to go to church. At uh, that time, I started pastoring. And I look at the mirror and I saw, I it's like I had the voice telling me, oh, you're not a social worker, you're an entrepreneur. And that's how I started business. Now, where am I going with all this story? Okay, because I know I, I was talking about the challenges. Yeah, where I'm going with all these things is that when you come to a new ground, be open-minded. Mm. Don't be lazy. Don't check yourself off with other people that have been on ground. You know, somebody said to me, oh, Pastor, this is your Ultima. Then I was driving to uh, Nissan Ultima, 98. He said, you need to buy a better car. I said, well, when the time comes, don't worry. When John Guma mature, who know, no, who know. <laughs> everything. Then I told him, I said, my priority is to buy my first property then. Within one year that I came to Canada, I was able to buy my first property. It takes a lot of hard work, uh, business mentality, social intelligence, linking up with people and all that. I was able to achieve that. Um, now, don't ever compare yourself with people that have been on ground. You don't mm -hmm. even know other people's stories. Your story is different from my story and, and all around. So when you don't think inwardly uh, what um, everybody has his own game. Everybody has his own talent. I know most times talent might not be enough, but I can tell you in this part of the world, is like you are like a bird that is taken out of the cage that is led to fly. The sky or the heaven is your limit. Mm. You can go far and wide. As long as you are healed and healthy, your health is important. Make sure you take good care of yourself. If whatever you feel that you want to do, launch into the deep, get up, get put your hand on it. You will you always find an expression. Yeah. Yes, but um, for example, I want to work as a social worker and I'm not licensed. I have to get a license. Yeah. Yeah. So if, well, it's a if, challenge. If, okay, now, uh, you're a social worker here. You have your degree from Nigeria, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. What you need to do is you have your transcript, apply to some university. If your grade is good enough, then I ask you to start on a third year. I did accounting, I started all the way from the beginning. Um, and some school might tell you are going to start from year two. Please do it. Go ahead. Education here is hundred percent different from how we study in Nigeria. There's no how you go to school here that you don't know what to study, mm. and you will always pass because it's going to be is hands on. Mm. There's going to be a lot of group work that you have to really, really participate. You mm -hmm. know, um, and in no time you're going to graduate. And the opportunities are there. As a social worker, you can work with immigrants, you can work with foster kids, you can work with children aid, uh, children aid society, you can work with uh, uh, adults, you can work with old people, you can mm -hmm. work with unemployment, unemployment, unemployment. you yeah. can work with um, people that want to change their career. It's so, so workers are like doctors that. Um, Unless people to their resources. So it's a, it's a, it's a big, big thing. Nurses deal with the medical part, we deal with the social aspect. Housing and all that, looking for houses for people and all that. It's not of social services. Uh, you do assessment of people to know where they are and you're able to help them to, to work for the government, what their entitlement are meant to be. And of course, there's a part of social work now that is very, very broad, and that is mental health. Mental health. There are okay. a lot of mental health across board, all over the world. There are a lot of people 
are having mental health issues. Even as a pastor, I find it so challenging at times. I, when people come for counseling, I know some is not spiritual by my study. I know it's mental health, but you dare not say to people that, oh, you are having a mental health. They're not pastor, I expect you to. <laughs> but all you can do is to counsel them along the line and you know, give them a little bit of knowledge. I don't know if that answered your question. Yes, no, but I um, I'd like you to talk more challenges. Like okay. People are just coming. Okay. What, like there are they, I could say for one culture shock. Okay. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with that that you're you're black skinned? Of course. Okay. So okay. there are lots of challenges. <laughs> I really wanted to know how you've been able to navigate okay. to do business with the Asians and, and all that. Okay. I'm going to say this to us. In Canada, number one thing I want you to know is not as racially discriminated as other countries in Europe. Everybody in Canada migrated to Canada. It's no man's land. The original inhabitants of Canada is the white Indians. So before you racially discriminate against somebody, you also will realize that, oh, you are also an immigrant. Hmm. So everybody is an immigrant. The British came here first. And of course, the Chinese and the Indians and all that. However, everybody, let that resonate in your heart. Everybody is an immigrant. However, in, even in social services, when I was when I was in the university, they told us they gave us they gave us an acronym: OPP, Opportunity, Power, and Privilege. Mm -hmm. When you are working as a social worker and there's opportunity, there's power, there's privilege. They give us the hierarchy of how we operate as a social worker. If there are five applicants trying to embrace this opportunity, the first person you give it to is a white male Caucasian. Mm -hmm. You have to follow that. So if I'm a social worker and I have five people, I have a Caucasian, I have an Indian, I have a Chinese, I have a Caribbean, and I have an African, the first person, if they perform at the same level now, you must give it to a white male. That's the system. And after you give a white male, then you consider a female male Caucasian. Mm -hmm. Then you go to all these brown, Hispanics, and other Indians. Then, of course, <laughs> the giant, Africa. They go to Africa. Mm -hmm. Then, we'll be tidy. I'm not supporting the system. We advocate most of the time. I'm not really more into social work anymore where you advocate. The least people on the heart, if, if you're an African, Black and you're a Muslim. Hmm. They're the least people that will give will give him the opportunity. And that beats my heart. But you know, the system is what the system is. So every day we have people that are fighting across the board globally and all that. But you know, at times it takes a lot of time before before we turn the tide. But I'm not really, really doing that anymore. I'm an entrepreneur Muslim now. Um, now, one, one of the major challenges that people face when they come here, number one, you know, um, I'm sorry to say some part of Africa, like Nigerians, we are very a little bit aggressive, mm. a little bit aggressive. Um, nobody cares who you are. Nobody's looking at what you try. Don't, don't worry too much about what somebody is driving. Worry more about what is driving the person. Mm. Not what the person is driving, what they drive from inside. Many times, this syndrome, I'm better than my neighbor, would bring it to overseas, where people just want to show up, cares. But whether you are living a good life or you have the best of life, you know within yourself. And there's always a place that is called the future, where there are two destinations in life, where you are now and where you want to be. Where you are now. now and where you want to be. Forget where you're coming from. Where? They still come here. Oh, I remember when I was in Nigeria, I was doing very well. And so then you want to go back. Many times we need to forget the past, face the current situation you have. You want to stabilize your family. You want to stabilize yourself. You want to integrate into the culture and into the system. Of course, fundamentally, we know you, you need to go to school, uh, get some licensing. However, from my own experience, Going to school is not a big deal. Getting a job is not a big deal. We have been going, many people come here, they have master's, they have PhD, they have BSc and all that. Mm. School is not what I'm really, really going to advise people that are not coming through school. 
You got come into school, of course, you don't have a trust. But once mm. you start getting a license, dealership license, real estate license, brokerage license, those are where the money is. Mm. The license, you are making good money. And mm. that is what launched you into business. Of course, you made a job to stabilize for us. Then you begin to think about business. There's so many business. Every every problem is a, every problem is a business. Okay, so um, I think we're going to go on a short break, and when we come back, okay. we'll continue. So, um, guys, thank you for staying. Just stay on. We're coming back, but we have to go on a very short break. Okay. Yeah, we're back from that short break. Or this is the second episode. If you've not seen the first episode, please um scroll back and watch from the beginning. There's a whole lot to learn from um Pastor James Ussesi. So. Um, before we went on the break, we we're talking about the challenges that people face coming uh -huh. from Nigeria. They are not living their past. They want to be like what yeah. they've always been, not knowing that this is a new phase and you have to be willing to start putting the work. And in no distant time, that's the thing about Canada. I've seen people come in one year, they're already settled. They have a house, even less than that. Yeah. They have their own house. They have their car. Everything is going on well. It just depends on you as a person. What are you content with? These people here, I found that most of them our content with what they have. There's nothing wrong in aspiring. Nigerians, we are very ambitious. <laughs> very, very. <laughs> hey, we're very ambitious because you want to put a shoe. <clears throat> but you have to learn that you're going on. Oh, one day you're going to leave this earth. What impact have you made? Absolutely. Try and learn to abound and to abase. That's what the Bible, for those of us that are Christians, yeah? It's, there's a part that says you have to learn to abound and to abase. Days. And these people, they're not Christians, but I can see they are practicing okay. some of the things that um, we should be practicing. They are content with what they have. They are not saying, but I'm not saying that there's nothing wrong. But sometimes you need to find that place that God wants you to be, dwell in it, and see yourself grow. As long as you're in his will, you're going to do well. The awesome. system already made it possible for you to live well. Mm. and the little benefits here and there if you're not too extravagant you can be okay with what you're getting okay so let's continue if you have more challenge then we'll go into your success stories and okay. uh, and oh. then we'll talk about ways in which people can migrate to canada now the challenges one of the challenges i like i, I we all know nigerians we have ego uh god has given us a lot of confidence which is good Confidence is an add-on to what God has given like, mm -hmm. most of the time. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we dare everything and we, we have the God. Um, you know, one of the things I we want to say uh, on this platform, please, please. Uh, when I went to college here, I was like one of the oldest students in the class. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I went to college here at the age of maybe 39. Went to college. Okay. Uh, and most of the students, they were 18, you know, 19, 17. And guess what? Everybody likes James in class. Because I don't really, many of them, some of them, I'm like a parent to them. But you see me in the class, hey, I five, what's up? How are you doing? You know, you need to incorporate into, you need to bring yourself down to their level. And that really, really helped me. Because I became the fun guy in the class. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, I'm... I'm but by the grace of God, I was one of the best students in the class. But there's a particular guy, very, very brilliant guy. He's even brilliant than some of our professors. There's no one doesn't know. Mm. So I quickly clicked on this guy. He's a white guy. And, you know, so both of us were doing tutorial. Uh, I do tutorial to Africans, and it does tutorial to everybody because I find some of the Africans, they don't understand his accent. So me and this guy began to sit together. Now, people said, ah, these two people, I, that can they be sitting together? But I know he knows more than I do. Hmm. So when we were taught in class, I don't understand what the professor is calling it. So, you oh know, my God. <laughs> Troy, what is going on? What is that man saying? Listen up. In a very simple manner, he's going to break it. I said, what? I got it now. The, the language was a barrier for you. It was one of the challenge. Yes, the asset. That guy is just 19 years old. Then, he was just 19 years old. But mm. after that, I was able to rub shoulder with him. We go out mm. together, we eat together. Most times, I, I pay for his lunch. Wow. So you need to bring yourself down. Age is just a number. Number, you, yeah. You don't respect people in this part of the world by age. is by what you can offer. 
mm. by what, what you can offer. offer, what you can put to the table. It's not by mm. now. Do you know my age? There's nothing like that. What have you got to offer? So when you have that, you also want to humble yourself to learn to get um um things that will be a blessing to other people. You want to also impact people. So you need to work yourself out. Try to learn and you know submit yourself to people. Now the challenges are also hard. When I was when I now finished college, it was better because I was at a school in Toronto at that time. One of the colleges, the further you go, the more difficult they are asking get. So when I went to the university in um, Orillia, so the one I drive for me, I drive one hour to school every day. Wow, every but, day. But it compressed my class to two days a week. So when okay. I got the money, I don't come back until nine. I don't, my anthropology lecturer, I don't hear a single word. Um, <laughs> so I started sitting in front of the class and started reading his lips. Wow. And I was just sitting to pass. How would I do it? One fateful day, we finished the class, I was going to my car, uh, you know, then I was driving a Camry 2013, very nice car. I thought I was on top of the wall. <laughs> the, the young white lady was walking in front of me. I wanted to show up. I quickly pressed the, my car so that I can see that I'm driving through that Camry 2013. <laughs> <laughs> my amazement. By the time she got to our own car, Range Rover, brand new, 2000. We were humble. <laughs> then I said, oh, um, is that your car? And he said, that's my car. My dad got it for me. Wow. But they got admission to the US. I said, wow. I said, you know what? I have a, I have a problem. I don't understand what they are saying in the class. I can't understand mm. the answer. Thank God I made that social connection. Mm. I said, really? Can you give me your social email address? Yes. She took my email address. That lady in the class is like a typewriter. Every wow. letter are saying, oh. He's typing. She's so typing. She was just sending me a note and all that. And, and she's one of the most humble girls in the class. Mm. Like, I don't know, maybe she's, she's a white, she's a Caucasian. She's a Canadian. She mm. never travels to class. She's always scared. Hmm. So I do. In the cold. Even yeah. in the cold. Yes, behave so maturely, and she drives the best car in the class, but you will never know. You never know. Her body humble. She was the one that helped me throughout the university. The courses mm -hmm. that I don't understand what they are saying, she mm -hmm. said the notes I read, and I was able to graduate. So that's one of the things you need to do. Don't keep quiet. Talk to people. Have social intelligence. Yes. Mix you need to mingle with Can't be an island. Yeah, you can never. Well, as you won't get to where you want to be. Yes, I was telling someone that just came in, like I said earlier, before we started this recording. So I told them, relax. Yes, this place will be quiet. But if you mix with the people in the community, such as going to church, church folks helped me a lot. You know, helped me even when we didn't have a car. They would come pick the kids, drop them off, and still do right now. That it can help. So just relax and is and um. Yeah. integrate it might not be where you want to be but for now be there and with time you get to where you want to be wow um any more challenges you like to share uh, with you? One, one, one of the major uh, challenges for people that are new also of course is the weather yes it's put cool. more put more effort to whatever you need to do in summer when it's getting to winter i even at now even at, at this stage now mm -hmm. uh, used to the weather during winter, I don't go out all the time. If it's not necessary, you won't see me outside. Mm. In my car is good. I have, my house is heated up all the time. So, but if I don't have to go out, I don't. I don't go out. I try. But during summer, you know, I put so much work. So whatever I need to do winter, then I take a break. And of course, dress warm. Then as the duration is killing a lot of people. Don't ever believe what people say. That, oh, Canada is very cold. Of course, there are some parts of Canada that is cold. Yes, Ontario. yes. Ontario and BC is the best. British Columbia, they have the yes. best way. Well, uh, yes. However, wherever you find yourself, just know within some time, you're going to get used to the system. It's only when you are transiting. When you are in a home or in a class 
or in your workplace, everywhere is warmed up. Warm, yes. <laughs> so like the boss, the boss is warmed up. But when you get down to transit, maybe walking to the house where you don't mm -hmm. have a car. Mm -hmm. But the day mm -hmm. you have a car, you don't feel cold much. Yes. Okay? And if you wear the but, right um, apparel, yeah. have your thermal wares, have the and insulated. Get your car in the car before you get close. into the car. Once you get into the car, the car is dead off. You get to where you are going, you park your car, you enter into the building, everywhere is warmed up. So, um, being, uh, talking about cold is also exaggerated. But the only thing that I know that you cannot do without is the snow. <laughs> Pack the snow. Of course, if you have money, then you can contract it out. We have to do that. That's their job, seasonal, seasonal work. Yeah, you have to clear your driveway. Clear your driveway and you pay them every and walk away. Yeah, and walk away. yeah, I know people get um, penalized if you, if you don't do that. If you don't clear your walkway and I fall in front of your house and I break mm. my leg, you're going to pay mm. a lot of money to me. It's a lot of money in this part of the world. Wow. So for you not to get into insurance claim, the only claim on you, then you need to pack your uh, okay. gun. You know, this part of the world, responsibility is inevitable. Mm. You can't be lazy. You just have to get some things done. You have to get to work. If you don't work, you don't get paid because you're paid hourly, hourly most of yeah. the organization uh once unless when you now become a professional where you are paid salary you are given a target once you meet your target then you can but this part of the world makes you to be responsible and it keeps you fit you are fit because you, you just have to do things you know that you the the diy do it yourself do it yourself time. you're right <laughs> You can't afford to hire a driver. Can in, or a nanny or an electrician. Uh, but you pay for the uh, employment insurance because things are done properly here. When you hire somebody, you must pay this EI, employment insurance, PPP, pension plan for him. So it's not like Africa where you just hire somebody giving 50,000 naira a month. It's not done. So there are a lot of things involved. Because of that, even when you are wealthy, you still have to do some things by yourself. So, okay. Let's move on to your success story. So what is one success story that you've had? Okay. Um, in this part of the world, like I said before, you have the wings to fly. Whatever you have, you have um, those good features that you have pictured for your future, that in that part of the world that you couldn't get to lay your hands on because of so many issues of life in that part of the world. Here in this country, you really commit sin because you don't need to bribe people to mm. get things done. Whatever you're qualified for, you're qualified. Automatically, you're going to get it. When you do your exam, you get your license, you can operate at every level. Mm. You don't need to lobby to get anything. You pass, you get it. Um. Uh, what once you are passionate about something, get more information about it and get it done. You start operating, you start practicing, and don't engage in a business where it is only for Africans or Nigerians. I've seen a lot of mm. people they want to start a business. All they are going to open is African groceries. So, which means it's only people Africans from Africans that will be there. Yeah, that's the meeting. But do a business that you can cut across everywhere. And another thing that is very important for people that want to come to Canada, learn something. If you're a plumber in this part of the world, you're a millionaire. You're an electrician, you're a carpenter, all these trades. Hair making, Hair making, tailoring. Yeah, tailoring. They make a lot of money from it. Things that we don't regard in Africa. Here you make money based on demand, not because of the name. Oh, I'm a chartered accountant. Many of them, all they do is taxes because mm. payroller system in place that automatically people's salary are done. So there's not too much to account for. Oh, I'm a business admin person. Everybody's a manager here. Mm. <laughs> and and um, when it comes to administrative work, they always use them as the image of the company. They want to put white people in front so that it gives them an image. And that's why mm. um, some some programs is good for for some color of people, but when you are into science oriented programs, IT engineering, 
medical sciences. White people don't really like to study medicine most of them. There's only a few most of the okay. that explain China. some yeah. things I'm asking about the health system. Yeah, they don't really like to study that much, you know. And because also they don't have much responsibility as we do. Some of us will have to send money to uncle, brother, auntie, nephew, niece, and all that. They don't have that. So they don't, they don't really care about making crazy money. So mm -hmm. they're able, And those are the generation of our own children. They are not going to be too also to make money as we, because many of them don't have, they're not going to have so much responsibility as we do. And finally, I want us to know that we are the last generation of people that will be calling home, beckoning on uncle and aunties and cousins. Our children now, they don't have time for that. They don't mm. have their cousins. They don't mm. even have. And don't think investing back home, if you're coming to abroad, you better reduce your investment back home. Because I have some of my church people now that their children will never go home to manage their property. And these are mm. people who are now. One, one, one sure. of my friends because talking. they don't know the system. They are training them like you came. So we want to go through that stress. One of my doctor friends told me, he said, Pastor, I need you to help me to talk to my son. I said, okay, what's up? What's the problem? He said, I said to him, you know, you also study medicine now. You know, I, I want you to do the same thing. I do you know I have so many houses in Nigeria, in Dubai and all that. The boys, it was if the boy was has been waiting for the moment. He said, Dad, you need to stop this nonsense. Mm. And said, yeah. <laughs> he said, if you think I'm going to do like the way your mommy is doing, building houses everywhere, I'm not going to work five days a week. I'm only going to work three days a week. I That's don't care about properties in Africa. You better get a lawyer that will manage it. And I'm not going to manage any property. That's a generation Z. <laughs> Man was shocked. So we need to know that if you're coming here, Mm -hmm. First of all, I have a, some quite a number of investment here. I have a few properties that the minimum of my property will be a million dollars. And I don't want to have houses in Nigeria. It's not that I don't have a house in Nigeria where your children are going home and families are fighting them. These children are born. Yeah. They don't have that mentality how to scheme, how to, they're just too vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And if they're not taken, they're going to be harmed. They're going to be mm -hmm. up. So uh, put your treasure where your children can reach and manage. And when you finally depart, I know that you are sure that it's secure in their hands. So if you're coming here, limit your, bring your money to where you're going to be and where your children's children will be and invest into their future. Um, there's money that government gives in this country that has caused quarrel between husband and wife. That's one of the major issues we are going through in this country. Government give every child what we call child support. Yeah. And times on people, so some of the men will say, no, no, I'm using this money to build us in the village. And it's not the best. When you put any money for these children every month, RRS pay, is that an educational mm, That's the educational savings plan. But, yeah, by the time they are 18, whatever you put down, the government will time save by Much. Yeah, for you. So if you put fifty thousand, that is going to be one fifty thousand. And most of the parents that are new to Canada, they fight over this money. As a pastor, I'm privileged to have sent you a lot of this food over this. This money I made for this children. You can take from it actually because a lot of money actually. But don't take the old money and be building in Africa. You know, people come to this part of world, the world. They quickly want to impress people. And they begin to do some crazy things back home. Settle where you're going to be first. Get a good life. Drive the best car. Have a good meal. You know, be comfortable. Uh, and of course, be a blessing to other people, people in your influence and all that. I think that is also a key of what we should do. Okay. So, what um, can you say has been your high moment in Canada since you came? Ah, okay. You know, um, my eye moment is when I got to the level where I'm also I also become an investor. Mm. Started doing some investment program, and you can see the trail of people that you head to Canada. Oh my mm. God! Uh, you know, I brought one people. student. I brought one. Uh, uh, there's a story of a student that came to Canada. Uh, he became a, a choir leader in the church. 
God wow. made in our church. I joined her in wow. the first child I named him. Wow. Our first child. Wow. One of our ministers in the church. So when you are also part of people's story, it's so amazing. I have tons and tons of students that I've brought to this country. That as they're coming, you also help them to cancel them in marriage, help them to navigate into investment and all. Mm -hmm. so, um, my greatest honor. I'm so grateful to God that I'm able to help people uh, that are coming. Okay, so that will lead us in the next question. So people want to migrate. What are the available pathways and how will they be able to fund it? Because funding is a, a big okay. one. We, everybody knows that um, the Canadian um, Express Entry is the easiest. But a lot of people never discover they are going to travel to when they are 50. <laughs> <laughs> When they are 40 and all that, which um, I know that would be a big problem to do express entry or uh, provincial nominee and all that because of the age barrier. A lot of people cannot get in. Mm -hmm. However, one, one of the best ways to come is like work permit. Um, now, everybody knows that when you're coming through work permit to work for two years, company that are able to get to LMIA, don't mind the kind of job it is. It's just two years. It is a mm -hmm. kind of job. Care job. Don't look at yourself as oh, an engineer. Mm -hmm. Just start somewhere. I can tell you, in every mess, there's always God's mercy. Message. Mm -hmm. There's always a mercy and a message in every mess. You learn and you work yourself hard. Mm -hmm. You, when you don't get your hands dirty at times, you don't make the best of your hands. Mm -hmm. You know. So the job will look dirty, but keep doing it is a matter of time. Time. Uh, work permit is good. It's one of the best in our advice people because immediately you come into work permit. I can tell you, Sister Faith is making a lot of money now. You can ask her for money. She <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, but when you come in as a student, also, Canada has given privilege for people to work 40 hours. Yeah. But you also know that you have a lot of work and you have to study. Do, um, don't um, abuse it. Yeah. And so when you work and you forget you came yeah. here for school. Mm -hmm. one, one, one of the spouse is working full time and the other spouse is going to school and working. Uh, cut your coat according to your size. Uh, don't uh, just make sure that within the next two years, let's stabilize and all that. Um, and of course, if you see investment, you can also do. And also, while you're doing that, the picturing business, we need a lot of our people to be in business. We can't be leaning on the shoulder of the Indians and the Chinese all the time. I'm, I'm being sincere. My last daughter, I'm begging her because I can see something in her. Please, Naomi, I want you to do business. Please. <laughs> and, and I mean it. I'm telling you from, from my heart of heart. Everybody that you see that owns conglomerate enterprises today, they are one time an employee. An employee. But if you don't begin to nurse it, we need to mm. get out of our shell. I encourage a lot of people, you just need to do business. And Jesus also said, do business till I come. Many times, mm. only, after, you know a lot of people, when they come to this part of the world, immediately became, uh, become a supervisor in their workplace and sit there on top of the wall. And because you don't know that life is... <laughs> that you can also hire somebody to work as a manager yeah you know i have a team of people that I work with today i have people that are working for me also and i'm proud of that but it takes taking that leap of faith taking that decision that you know what i can do more than that i can do more than this yeah so i want to take you back again so now i want to come to canada i don't have money how do i fund it okay interesting there's this new organization now. Oh my goodness, I've forgotten their name now. Uh, Empower. Empower, yes, I know them. So there are some universities that they allow. I have students that have done that for. Um, they're gonna give you now they've increased the money to hundred thousand dollars. So once you get your admission, you apply for it. We do that for people. You you get your admission, you apply for the money, and you are granted. The Canadian embassy can never deny it, no matter regardless of your age. Once that money is approval has been given to you in principle, you have your confirmation, you have your letter. Once you apply for your study permit, they're going to give you. And immediately you get here, 
you go to the school, you do your registration and all that, the money will be released to the school. And after the school takes their tuition fee, the whole rest of the money will be given to you. Mm. And you have 10 years to pay the money. It's such a, you can imagine what they are doing in Western world. My prayer and my fear is that Nigerians mm. do not sit up within short time. Because I know whatever Nigeria put their hand, they must make sure. And that's one of the areas that I also want people to be very, very mindful. A lot of vehicles are being stolen, shipped to Nigeria. At times when I go to auction or dealership training, a few of us that are black, especially Nigerians, I couldn't raise my head up because at times it's over the news that Nigerians are the ones. Amazing. Um, yeah. It's embarrassing. Uh, very embarrassing. So, empower is there, and also. But that's for students. It's not for people that just want to come. They want to school. So, what's the question now? People that wants to to come. No, how do you fund yourself? So, you've spoken for people that want to come okay. to school. So, you've covered that empower. So now, for someone that just wants to work, how do they get that job? How do they fund it to come? <laughs> <laughs> you know, let me maybe this will help. Six years ago, a friend of mine, we grew up together. We've known each other for a long time. wanted to come to Canada. I realized I can't, I can't just help him with that so much money. And I know he has two properties. So I said to him, I said, go and sell one of your property. He mm. was fine. He said, that would be anything you could sell my property. Is he being in Canada is the ultimate, da, 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 and he just, you know. Mm. Um, and he, he got angry and we just end the conversation. Two years after he called me back, he said, I'm ready for what he said. Because he never knew things were going to go back. Business mm. was going well. He finally sold the property. And of course, I helped him and he, he got to Canada. Believe you me, three years after, he came back to me and said, the same property I sold, I've been able to build a better one of the same. Wow. So at times- Within got, three years? Yeah, yeah. So at times you just need to use what you have to get what you want. You want to use what you have to get what you want yeah. the right way. Yeah. Sometimes you can talk to friends and families to loan you. If that wants to get here, you're gonna get you're gonna be okay. Yeah, things are tough right now. But I know in, in Nigeria now things are very tough. However, I also believe there's we still have some good people that can be of help. Once you make it in your priority that you want to make the you cut your expenses. I knew I was going to travel. I made up that I never engage in any serious relationship that would tie me down. I never do any capital projects. And for people that are single, if you know you are going to travel, mm -hmm. marry. it's causing a lot of trouble. Don't what? Don't marry before you, coming. Before coming, please. If you are not in any serious... You are breaking some hearts here. <laughs> Let's be honest. It's, it's good when you are not married than to divorce after you might have married. Because once you know you are traveling and you are single, just, just remain single. Okay, except you have to come because together. The and there are options for them to come together. Then, if, okay, let me... I, I know some people that want to come to Canada that are single. You know what they did? A single guy and a single girl, they team up and funded their trip. Okay. 10,000, 10, They know, you know, in this part of the world, they allow common law. Okay. So both of them come to Canada, they find their way, and they're able to support their... Themselves, okay. That family. makes sense. Because once you are... Because another thing is, somebody who is married now, Coming to this part of the world, at times you are busy with so many things, you don't give a call back. Yeah, you don't give time for that relationship, and then you now have issues, and then you divorce, and yeah. you're breaking hearts. What, what, what okay, I understand say? what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I called me, one of my students that I helped here is a lady. The, the husband called me today, 4 a.m. I'm, I'm telling you, he started crying on the phone. I said, what's up? Why are you crying? He said, Pastor, I found what I did. I know the guy spent 10 million to sponsor oh. to come. Because she has she's fell out of love. Oh, that's... Now, I've put in his own application for his work permit. The girl said he's going to cancel it from immigration. That he doesn't want to marry him again. 
So all these things, it depends on who and who is involved. If you are not sure of this relationship and you have the ambition to travel, please travel first. And if you are able to bring the person, we bring the person and marry because it's causing a lot of trouble in our community now. I'm telling you. Wow. 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 You actually said so much. Um, we are coming to the end of this session today. So um, what you have spoken about a lot of business opportunities already. That was going to be my next, next question, but you've talked about getting to dealership, having license, becoming a broker. You know, um, those are sort of business opportunities. Set up business, not don't limit it to a particular group. If you want to have a store, have a store where everyone can come. Uh, you can have niches, which is okay. So in one store, you can have... Um, African store, continental, and all. And there, you've talked about Empower, the organizations that can sponsor your business. There are lots more. I'm sure there are lots more uh, that that would have talk, spoken about because of timing. So, um, what is your so your last words for the audience? What's your anchor for living abroad? And what advice would you give to young couple, people that are already married that are here? I know one time when we had conversation. If you were talking about how you have your own family time. I don't want to bring out the words out of your mouth. So what's your anchor and what are the last words? And then quality day. Oh, well, my, my final say um, to us on this platform is that I want everybody to know that the most important thing you want to leave behind yourself is legacy. Uh, no matter what you have, houses, cars, everything is going to go, they're going to lose time one day. But mm -hmm. uh, nobody's going to put time in your coffin. Nobody's True. Going to put like when the queen died, she didn't yeah. take anything. Yeah. So you want to make sure you leave the legacy, good value in, in, in paper. Now, in abroad, you will realize that most time you are in indoor with your wife and your children. So you must really, really love your wife. You must um, really love your husband because you spend most time together. Together, love. You know this your schedule. I know our schedule. She knows my schedule. She knows that by ten minutes I'll be home. So you you just have to love one another. Very 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 key. If you are not romantic, you better be <laughs> romantic. I'm telling you, because it could be boring at times. You have then you have to create your own form. Like I, what I do with my children every Friday, the time uh, one hour with daddy. We talk about social skills, building and life experience and all that. On Sunday, one hour with pastor. Talk about to them about Christian faith mm -hmm. and Christian morals. You need to create that time. And also on Friday, we have a few friends that we hang out. It could be mm -hmm. my afternoon. Awesome. And we have fun. I'll take note of that. You really need that social because if you don't. You're gonna you, you a lot of people are depressed because they are alone. You need to have few family friends. You don't need too many people in your life. Few family friends that you can hang out. As you grow older, you don't come to your house tonight with a barbecue. Oh, mm. movie night. You know all those things. You relate and people that you share the same value with, and of course, save. When you save, you are saving your life. Mm. Save. Save. Save money. Save, save, save. Yeah, save, yeah. Saving, saving helps a lot. Um, and also spend quality time with your family and loved ones. Life is not all about working. And don't ever leave to impress. Because you want to impress. Impress anybody. When you are good, people will know. When sure. you are good, people will know. When you have it, people will also know. Don't kill yourself all in the quest. To impress people, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow, guys, um, we've spent one hour talking. <laughs> if you are not checking, I know we've done this sixty minutes. Um, hearing for Pastor James Olusesi sharing his experience as a social worker, as a pastor, as a business person, as an entrepreneur. If you want more information about how to migrate to Canada, feel free to send me an email to the information chick at Gmail. It's right there in the description. And then I will freely give you his contact and you can continue the conversation for those who want to come in through the express entry, provincial, um, work, work permits, school routes. He will give you the information you need. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, share, like, comment, 
and look out for more videos. Just click on the notification button for when I post. So see you guys. Thank you so much and thank you, thank you, today. Thank you everyone. Have a good one.